YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Concise the Barber. All right, so in this video, you're gonna see me do a taper. I'm gonna take it down with a wavelength to one and a half. So we're gonna get right into it. Right here, I have my Oster Octanes. I have the one and a half uh, detachable blade. And we're gonna take this thing down. We're gonna go with the grain. I start in the middle. Uh, I tend to do that with all the people that I know that want waves or already are waivers. I start from the middle and then I go with the grain, <clears throat> the way the direction of the hair grows. So you will see that I'm just gonna keep combing and I'm just gonna take this down. I like doing this because it definitely just helps out uh, the crown area and making sure that it's not too light. And also make sure that you pay attention to the technique that I use to get his hair to lay down. Since he just had an afro, um, you wanna make sure that before he leaves your chair that this haircut looks nice and clean and his hair is already laying down. So once he starts the, the waving process, he already has a good canvas to start with. All right, so now I'm gonna start with the neck taper. What I do is I start from the middle and then I angle it down. It's like an upside down U shape, uh, angle it down. Uh, he likes the shadow, the shadow taper that I do on him. Um, my client gets this all the time. So let me know what y'all think about this. Like I said, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the technique that I use. So this is my cordless T outliners. Starting out with that, clean up the neckline. Make sure the shape is good. And then we're gonna start uh, with the sides, clean them up. And I'm gonna go around the ear just a little bit, not too much, but I just wanted to get some of that uh, loose hair out the way as I start my, uh, my taper. And he likes to keep his corners dark, so that's why I start a little bit lower than, than usual. So you definitely just gonna see the process that I do just to keep everything nice, you know, nice keep everything the way that he likes it. All right, so this is the technique that I was talking about. You definitely need to do a hot towel uh, method. Uh, you definitely, right after the cut, get a hot towel, put it on the head and make sure that you're moving your hands in the direction the hair wants to lay. It's so important that you do the hot towel method, especially for somebody that wants to start out doing waves and uh, the hair was uh, sticking up and frizzy. This is definitely, you know, something that you need to do. And then from there, you're just gonna see me, I'm gonna brush down. I'm also gonna use uh, some hairspray. This is, uh, from Fructus, it's the Extreme Hold. It's the number five, spray his hair down. It's definitely important that uh, that I do this because once I start doing a taper, uh, it holds the hair in place and it helps cut a lot better and faster. And I also, I'm gonna get the blow dryer and I'm gonna blow it, you know, make sure that it's nice and dry. Easier, easier to work with. But this is something that I love to do. My clients love it and they feel like they're getting like a premium uh, service. All right, so let's get with this neck taper. I got my magic clips. I got the guard, I mean the lever open and I'm going up about a half an inch, keeping that shape still. Make sure you do that, it's very important and just take your time and make sure you have a comb in your hand to make sure that you're getting everything. And then I just closed it from the lever. I went, you know, I closed it and then uh, I faded down. Now 
So now that I have the zero guard, I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna go up about a half an inch with the lever open. And then I'm gonna start closing it and fading it down. Definitely coming, you know, coming together. The blend is you know, coming out well. And let me know what y'all think of the shadow fade too. Please leave something, in, you know, in the comments. Let's have a discussion. What y'all think of how, how how well I did this shadow shadow fade. All right, so now I have the one guard. The one guard, I kind of go up just a little bit more than a half an inch. It's probably like three fourths. Um, I do that because I, I could really like spread, you know, expand the blend right now, especially with the one since I already went with a one and a half with the grain. So I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna fade down and we'll come up just a little bit more, but you will see that it blends well with the zero guard. And I think the highest guard I do use is the one and a half as you can see right here. Start with the lever open and then you fade down and you start adjusting that lever a little bit, closing it little by little. Y'all see that comb, that comb work though that I'm doing? It's very important, y'all. Now, this is something I always do too as well. I go with the grain with the one open and um just make sure that I get all the frizz, like the frizzy hair that's standing up. I start with the back since I was already in that area. And I'm gonna go around the whole head, y'all. Very important. Like I said, once he leaves, once the client leaves your chair, you wanna make sure that the hair is laying down nice and smooth. And you might need to do some lever play if the one guard is not cutting anything. Uh, with the lever open, just adjust it a little bit and you know close it just to make sure that you're you're catching something. You don't want to just do something like this and you're not getting anything. It's a waste of time. All right, now we're gonna start the side taper. Just like the back, I start with the lever open and then I fade down. Then from there, it will be the zero guard, faded down. The one guard, faded down. I believe I end with the one and a half. I think that's the highest guard I used throughout the whole cut anyway. But I'm just gonna show you guys this side. I'm not gonna show you the other side since it's basically the same steps. And from, from this process, we're gonna go straight to the, the lineup. Another thing, if you guys haven't noticed that I do have the other guard on my hand, I'm not sure how many barbers do do that, but sometimes I always, uh, I prepare for the next step. So sometimes I keep all the guards in my hand if I can fit them, or I have one or two guards in my hand. Just something to think about when um, you're, you're trying to get, uh, you're working on your time of uh, your haircuts. It might be able to help you out instead of keep going back to your station, grabbing something. All right, so I just closed the one and a half. I started with it open. Now I just closed it all the way and finish out this, uh, finish out this taper. I think it looks good, y'all. What y'all think? 
let's get into the lineup. I'm using the gold FX trimmers. Like, as y'all can see, these things cut like butter, man. Like, I feel like everybody should have them in their arsenal. They're definitely the hitter trimmers. They, you, I wouldn't say that you, because there's always going to be somebody that says that, you know, whatever trimmer they're using is the best trimmer. I ain't gonna say that you need them, but I definitely feel like everybody should just at least try these out just to see what you, how you think that you will like them. You know, don't go by anybody else's opinion. But I definitely like these trimmers. Uh, of course, you know, they're on the, the pricey end, but uh, I definitely think they're worth it. So I'm doing a C shape. How I start my C shape is I, as you can see, I did the corners a little bit just to start the L shape, and then I do my sideburns, and then I go in the middle to really perfect the C shape of the uh, the hairline. It's very important to me. Let me know what y'all think of that, uh, the process, that method that I did. Let's start with the other side of the neckline. Like I said, man, these things, they cut like butter. Right. I, I really like these trimmers. I'm gonna do the front line. I, sometimes I do do my front line last, especially it helps out uh, knowing exactly where my corners are at and how I'm gonna line up the front line. Sometimes I start with uh, like one of the stronger sides. I start with the weaker side and then I go to the stronger side. And sometimes I start in the middle and I just go to each side to make sure that everything looks right. So I'm gonna start the front lineup, and as you can see, I'm starting on this side. Uh, then I'm gonna go towards the middle and go to the left side. The reason why I did that is because um, his his hairline was a little bit light on that on that side compared to the other side. So now I'm just gonna match it up. Don't forget about the slim lines, y'all. They, there's still some hitters too. I definitely feel like that should be in everybody's arsenal as well. Especially for the beginner barbers. A little clean up. And that's basically it, y'all. Let me know what y'all think of this cut. I appreciate y'all watching. Like I said, it's Concise to Barber. If you haven't done it already yet, please hit that subscribe button. Please give me a like. Leave a comment. Let me know what you would like to see or anything that you would, uh, you know, would like to discuss. So, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in. It's Concise to Barber. I love y'all. God bless. I'm out.